Facebook find Bigfoot. Mink Creek, Idaho, Bigfoot. High school students film Bigfoot on a hill while Nordic skiing. February 2012. Uh, Jeff Meldrum sent this to us for analysis. This is the second of two videos that he has sent to us. Dr. Meldrum was interested in this because of the footprint. We provided the D-shaker uh, needed, uh, he needed and waited uh, to do the authentication. Here it is. The best and clearest track was photographed a few times. The animal was not tracked. Uh, it confirms on observing from a strategic position all over black coloring, uh, tree peaking, leaves as soon as it's it spotted, the hand is held in a cup position, uh, the print is a square toe configuration for inline stability, uh, the width to length ratio, and possibly a coned head. So here's the Sasquatch distribution throughout North American forests. It's pretty consistent to the forest uh, distribution map. And if you look in the mid mountain west, you'll see uh, Idaho, Montana, and Utah have quite a number of sightings. So here, Pocatello is in the top left hand corner. And one of our favorite sightings of all time is 1796 from Idaho, where uh, basically a guy sees uh, three different Sasquatch, and then his friend cooperates at um, walking kind of hand by hand. Um, it's a great sighting. It's not too far away from this. Okay, here's the raw footage. There's no sound, so we'll just keep talking. All right, he looks up there, and it's behind the big uh, bush, and then it just walks away, and then you can still kind of see it there. It's, our, it's a little black dot, and then it kind of disappears. Okay, um, this is the D shaker we provided to Meldrum, and you'll see it on the um, on the Finding Bigfoot episode. And it basically just takes each frame and tries to balance it out so it's a steady shot. And you can kind of see it. You can kind of see it's in position and then just walking away. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, I think you can start to see some of the detail. We'll skip the end part from now on. And uh, you can see as it goes in a couple spots where you see the brow ridge, you'll see the cupped hand as it kind of walks through the heavy brush. Um, looks very similar to this Russian footage um, that is supposedly authentic and it's a Bigfoot on a hill and uh, basically a cameraman has turned the camera and his, his camera is being fallen down. Uh, it catch, catches this Sasquatch that was watching from the top of the hill and then walking away. So strategic position. Let's look at the cupped hand and uh, forehead. If you, there you see the hand is held in the cup position, kind of broken, either at the knuckles or the wrists. And uh, if you look at the Patterson-Gimlin film, you'll see the same thing. There's a couple frames, and you'll see the, the elbow bent and, the, and bent at the wrist as well. The three clips Miyaka as it's kind of stalking around, you'll see also that nice bend at the wrist as it's going through and the little thumb coming up there. Pennsylvania Auburn, this is also sent to us by Jeff Meldrum. As, he, as it's coming here, you'll see the, 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 the cupping of the hands as well. The, the right hand is also cupped behind. New Pegris Back Road, um, 2008 by Douglas R. Thomas. As it's coming here, you, you see the cupped hand three different times. There's the last one right there. And as it as it walks across, cupped, cupped. Okay, look at the brow ridge with no forehead. Um, at this point here, it's turned its head and it looks like it's looking down in a kind of a way as the arm is just flipped backwards. And you can see that coned head with the, the heavy brow. Look at Patty, you'll see the, the face slopes slightly backwards. You see the heavy brow and really no forehead at all. And the nose is, abs is hidden by the cheekbones. Same thing you'll see there. You'll see the heavy brow and really no forehead at all, and just sloping straight back. If you look at uh, the Pennsylvania, you'll see the same thing. I just picked the right frame there. You'll see that basically it was a heavy brow and it's um, going straight back. It's not like a human. Uh, if you look at the uh, Prince Edward Island as the quadrupedal as it went across, 
that's a still frame, a little bit of contrast. Basically, you can kind of see their brow straight back. The footprint is photographed. Now, what's, what are some of the reasons for a, a, a legitimate photograph? Well, the width to length ratio should be good. Uniform width, and the toe is almost in line. So this is a, a, a forward shot at, of, of this uh, footprint. And here's the top shot. Um, and why Meldrum likes it is it's a, that kind of that one to two ratio with a heavier um, kind of on the inside, you'll see that you know, there's a little bit more um, dirt heating up. See the yellow line up on top uh, relates to the, you know, how in line. If you look at Patty, you'll see the same thing, that two to one with that, that those toes are kind of in line. And there you see when the toes are up in the, in the Patterson Gimlin in the film. Here's an interview with the witness. This didn't really look human-like, so I don't really know what that is. It's not a bear. It's not a moose or anything. Um, it's it was big and bulky and black. The students then climbed that ridge and took photographs of some Bigfoot prints. They found it could all be a hoax. But the high school student who shot the video doesn't seem to be looking for attention. He asked us not to show his face or give his name. And he says right now he's simply not sure just what it was he saw standing on that ridge. I'm not going to say yes it was a Bigfoot or no it wasn't because I don't know and I, nobody knows. Pretty believable. Jeff Meldrum knows the family, loosely, and interviewed the young man. Conclusions. Okay. Sasquatch own territories of strategic significance. They own them as individual males with a monogamous female partner. Just as Albert Osman had observed. They must do a SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, when there is a noise or disturbance, they have to know what it is. In this case, there were students out in the wintertime. So if you looked at southeast Idaho, you would see uh, water and mountains or whatever, but that might be the Sasquatch distribution there. Okay, Sasquatch will observe from above during the day, and they'll come from below at night, like in the Alabama thermo. The hill protects them in both cases. It protects them from sighting during the day, and it hides the sound at night. Sasquatch are strategic geniuses, but socially afraid. Facebook find Bigfoot.